morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, little moment of celebration. Uh, we have two flags behind us, of course, the American flag and the Nebraska state flag. And I, I, I wish I had planned this a little bit better because we could have hung the Yazidi flag over here as well. And those of you who haven't seen the Yazidi flag, it has a large red image in the middle of it, and it is Husker red. <laughs> there is a depth of connection. Before we knew one another, there was a depth of connection Amen. between this wonderful place to live and work and raise the family and between the wonderful Yazidi community who values work, who values the family, who values tradition. So, that, Trevor, thank you so much and the uh, Nebraska State Historical Society and the museum for uh, working, so the Historical Museum, rather, for working so hard to put this together. Uh, and also, I wish you didn't have 550 historical markers throughout the state. It takes me so much longer to travel anywhere every time I have to stop and get out and read one. But I'm always attracted to them. We have an app now. You can do it on the phone. Thank you. Very, very, very good. Uh, this is an important day because the museum uh, is going to obviously trace the history of immigration in Nebraska. What The people who came before us, who gave us what we have, and the people who are still coming today to uphold the same beautiful gift of tradition. And what is my role here? When I first entered the United States Congress, I found something out and it struck me as profoundly unjust. That the persons who were standing side by side, our troops in Iraq, translating, helping us militarily, tactically, there was a special visa program, but it had been capped at a very low number for persons who had risked their own lives with standing next to our troops, and who continued to put their life and their family's life at risk because of the service that they provided us. I thought that was particularly unjust, so I introduced a piece of legislation which eventually became law. And by the way, Robert Byrd was president of the Senate at that time, so it's his signature that's on the bottom of this. <laughs> Uh, and that became law, which allowed an increase in the number of these uh, visas, special immigration status, for those who had served us, our American military personnel, and put their own lives at risk. I had not heard of the Yazidi community when we initiated this. And it was only later that I began to learn about this very special group of people who called northern Iraq their home who had willingly volunteered to do this with us, whose tradition was a bit different than ours and different than the surrounding areas, who had lived with a commitment to peace and maintaining their tradition and culture. But then the connection began to be made, and through the Yazidis community's ongoing dialogue with us about the particular uh, problems that they had, those who had come to Nebraska to make their home, I began to learn more about this very, very special religious tradition, this very special community that is, has, is centuries old. Once again, you've heard it, me say it before, welcome to Nebraska. We're ho so happy you here, that you are here. And you did a wonderful job explaining your pilgrimage to this great place. And I want to thank you and all of you who served as translators and got your special immigration status through this way, but also thank you for making Nebraska your home. And finally, thanking you for continuing to contribute to this depth of values that we have in our community to become what it means to be a great American and at the same time, hold, maintain, and pass along your beautiful traditions. Um, recently, Layla, I hope you don't mind if I tell this story, but I, I occasionally have the opportunity to dialogue with the Yazidi community at various cultural events. And since we've gotten to know one another and become friends, I stated that there is a problem. And if I could share the problem with the community in an open and transparent and friendly fashion, would it be acceptable to them? And everyone responded, yes, please, Congressman, tell me the problem. And so I stated it clearly. The Yazidi community cooks too much. <laughs> if you've had the chance to go to one of the Yazidi events, go hungry, because you will not leave hungry. You have to prepare yourself to eat and partake in the, in the wonderful traditions. 
Let me also recognize a special individual who's here, uh, Angel Velechkov, who served in my office for many, many years, uh, working on a whole variety of fronts, but particularly in the immigration arena. Angel himself is an immigrant, and so I asked him to serve in that capacity, and many of you here have dialogued and worked with Angel through many years, and now he's with the state of Nebraska working on international agreements and such. Greg Ibach, our sec Secretary of Agriculture, did you get confirmed? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> he will shortly be confirmed to become the new Under Secretary of Agriculture uh, at the United States Department of Agriculture. We hope. I think that's on track. But it's nice, to, it's nice to see you as well. Finally, where do we go from here? The issue of, of forced migration is one of extraordinary difficulty, obviously, for peoples who have been displaced by war and who are suffering. And those who have been particularly targeted for genocide. The Yazidis, the Christians, mm -hmm. and other Muslim traditions. Uh, we were able to pass a resolution several years ago that declared what was actually happening to these communities to be genocide. And of course, that triggers certain uh, mandates in international law, but the, the primary outcome was to raise international consciousness as to the plight of the ancient Yazidi and, and Christian communities as well. And therefore, what are next, next steps? There are many people, as you point out, that are caught in this vice still. Their homes have been destroyed. The security of their ancient land, even though it may have been cleared from the savage barbarism of ISIS, still remains very fragile. There's a security problem. The idea next is to create the conditions in which people who are nearby, who had to flee, and had the potential to return to their own homes and regain their land under the proper security con conditions, to be repatriated back and to reintegrate into Iraqi society, perhaps miraculously, maybe over time even Syrian society, uh, is a necessary U.S. foreign policy goal. Um, we have more displaced people internationally uh, than ever before, and it's obviously concentrated to a degree in Iraq in Syria, but also in many other places around the world. The next architecture of foreign policy thinking in, the, in, in terms of the international community must be how to consider in authentic friendship the necessity of stabilized governance, just economic structures, and the long-term idea of societies that are truly just and good are built on one principle the inherent dignity of rights and rights of each individual person. And so to the degree that we can and to the degree that we must, we will absorb peoples who want to rebuild their lives and come here and become good Americans. And you've seen that tradition happen over and over with waves of immigrants, particularly here in Nebraska from Germany and the Czech Republic, later Vietnam, Bosnia and Kurdish people as well, and then of course the newest community to come here and make it their home are the Yazidis. Um, I'm proud of you for a number of reasons. Fundamentally because of the depth of friendship that we've been able to uh, develop, but also embracing this beautiful idea that was concluded in your speech, God bless America. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for, again, your commitment to this community and to being great Americans. I want to also, um, if I could briefly, mention there's a person here, and I hope she doesn't mind me mentioning this, who was um, captured by ISIS. And I don't know the fullness of the story about how she was eventually released, but I do know a little bit about her suffering. Shireen is here with her friend Layla. So again, we want to welcome you to our community, and we are grateful that you are here, and grateful that you have been so honest in sharing the extraordinary horror that not only happened to you, but so many of your friends and family. When we were able to pass the genocide resolution declaring what ISIS had done to the Yazidis and others, to be genocide. There was a gentleman in the gallery of the House of Representatives that night 
a Yazidi from Sinjar. And I have a photo of him once Sinjar was cleared. And you all know the story now that so many of the Yazidi community had to flee to the top of the mountain. And they faced certain death. And the United States, through a coordinated air attack, was able to hold ISIS off. Once Sinjar was eventually cleared, this man went back into the village. He was being shot at. And he found his home. And the church, the Christian church next door to his home, was in rubble. I have a photo of him with a, hand, a wooden cross that he fashioned by hand through some scraps of wood. And him planting it on the top of that rubble. Again, putting himself at risk because he was being fired upon while he was in that town. Putting that Christian cross on top of that pile of rubble. And I asked him, I said, why did you do this? He said, they were my brothers. This man who did not share that faith tradition, nonetheless, saw and reacted and responded from his heart that his brother, his brother had been re-crucified, if you will. And he wanted to show a sign of solidarity, even though he didn't share that religious tradition by planting the Christian cross there. The Yazidi community has embraced this idea of peace, that all persons have dignity, and that their tradition sits alongside so many others in proclaiming this great idea, this universal ideal, that we ought to be bound in mind and heart as a community. That's why this exhibit and what you're doing, Trevor, is so important, to trace the history of immigration and how it's impacted our community and updating it today. Thank you all so much for joining us. Now, you can see this is a little while back. Nancy Pelosi was Speaker of the House. Oh. Mm -hmm. And this is signed by the president of the, of the Senate, President Pro Tem at the time, Robert Byrd, who is now deceased, he's no longer a senator. And you can see the signature there, and President Bush signed it with this in the box. I don't know if uh, this is the direct means by which you're here, but if it is, <coughs> let's, let's be thankful. And perhaps it is, you said you came in 2010, right? Thank you very much. Thank you.